We are, we're in Ilkley. Um, this one, it's five metres long, it's three and a half metres deep. We've put our rods in the other day. We had, you've seen us bailing out the water because it was absolutely a mud bath. Uh, we used that little drill pump. So we've got two rows across the middle instead of one because it's that much deeper now. Um, what we're going to do now, we're going to get a rake. We're going to rake all that off there. We're going to film quite a lot of it for you today because we're going to do two of these today. There's 12 people on site today. And as soon as we've got this first base starting to go in, we're then going to split the team and drop onto another job and do exactly the same thing. So you'll get double of everything today. And it's going to be a fast pace because, as I've just said, there's 12 people on site. It's going to cost me a lot of money and I've got to keep everybody working and make sure I'm that we're earning some money. So there you go, these rods, they're 24 mil, they're M24. These particular ones are galvanized with galvanized nuts as well. What we'll do, we'll, like I say, we'll find our highest point, which to me is over there. John will arrive shortly with the laser. We'll set the laser up. We'll wind the nuts down to where they need to go. We'll rake that off. We'll get a weed membrane down over there and then we'll start getting the base in. Okay, so the perimeter timber is 4B3. It's been pressure treated in the tank at Shire Timber. Um, what we'll do, it's four, it's four inches high and it's three inches wide. So the, the, the height there will sit upright and that'll allow for 100 mil insulation in. So because the building is over five meters in width, the timbers are 4.8, so we have to join the timbers. So what we're gonna to use to join the timbers are these splice plates. Basically, we'll have two pieces of timber. We'll put the splice plate on like that. We'll put a lot of um, ring cut, not ring cut, uh, twist nails in there, some twist nails in there. Another one will go on the bottom side like that as well. And that will join two pieces of timber together. And that will be strong enough sufficiently to hold the base. So what I'm going to do now, <coughs> I'm going to cut them. I'm going to use this um, DeWalt chop saw, uh, compound miter saw, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's the biggest one they do. 305 mil blade on it. Um, so I'll cut them at a meter. Just make sure the guides are out of the way there not plugged in. I'll cut them at a metre. What we've got, we've got... Michael, will you join some of them, please? Yeah? Join them. Join them. With the stretch plates, you know how to do yeah, it? Have you yeah, done it far? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. So Michael's going to start joining them now. Uh, Amy will have twist nails in her van, Michael. Yeah. Like I say, we've got four of them to cut. They'll be our perimeter and our cross member timbers as well. And what I'm using is this one because it was the most twisted out of all of them. So we'll cut this up to bits. John, you get, John, will you get somebody on the rake and start raking that? I'll give you like, um, so what I'm gonna do with this, look, there's a massive knot in there, which is gonna be a problem. So this is, what I'll do, I'll put that there. And then that'll be in the center then, and we're not gonna be cutting into that. So you wanna try and avoid, keep away from that best you can. So that's as far extra timbers there. That'll give us enough um, to do our cross members. And then we've got uh, the side members, which are long enough anyway, cause it's three and a half deep and they're far point. Uh, eight long like i say it's been pressure treated it's been in a vacuum tank and what that does it draws all the treatment right to the center of the timber so that's fully treated for be free what it is i know some of you are struggling to get this out of building yourself it's actually a wall plate so that will go on top of your inside skin of your house wall and then your roof will be cut into that with the bird's mouth so that's just basically a wall plate right then i'll do the twist nails that we're going to put these in with um what we're going to do if you nail every other hole michael yeah every, so you haven't done it there but you know every there, 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 yeah. every other hole, yeah? yeah, in the formation, yeah, and then on there, and then do the other side, yeah, and then when you push that in, make sure that that's like that, Michael, you know, nice, yeah, okay, right, no, come over here, Matthew, do you, do you want to grab a hammer and get one of these joined over here? Yeah. Right, we're still going, yeah. Okay, so John's using his staff. We're using this uh, Spectra laser level. It's a self level. It's a self leveling laser. So he's got a staff over there, which is a laser finder, basically. What he'll do is find he's finding his highest point now. Um, you can hear it beeping there, so that means that he's found the laser. So he'll lock off the um, 
the finder and then it'll move around and all the nuts will be then brought to that height. What's he doing? It looks like Bigfoot coming out of the trees. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, so what we're going to do, we put the three nuts on, like I said, we put the three nuts on, keep them to the top, and then if you fall over, you're not going to take your eye out. So what's happening now, they're winding down the nuts. We'll go around and take this top nut off because... We'll take this top nut off because... We'll take this top... Fuck me. Right, so like I said, we leave three nuts on. Walk on bottom. We'll leave three nuts on. If you fall over, you're not going to take your eye out. What you need to then is wind two nuts down roughly to where they're going to go. We take our top nut off because we can't get our shoe on without that coming off first. Yep. Right, so I'm using this Hakoki drill. It's a £100 drill and I'm using a DeWalt 25mm speed bit. We drill the holes in the centre. Um, the idea behind this is that you keep the hole as tight as possible to maintain the integrity of the wood. So 25mm is one mil bigger than the rod. When the drill goes in, what I'm going to do, just going to angle it a little bit like that so that the rod slips on a lot easier. What I'll do now is get the chainsaw and just notch them out. The idea behind that then is that the nut sits low. So Adam, can you see that? So what I will do, I will just notch that bit out there with the chainsaw. And then when the nut is wound down, it will be flush with the top of the wood so that it doesn't impede the chipboard flooring when it goes over the top of it. So we're going to notch it out, we're going to use this still saw, it's an MS-170, it's the smallest saw that still do, but it's perfect for the job. Um, obviously, there comes with using a chainsaw a lot of risks, so you need to wear precautions and safety gear. Right, Sean, will you hold it for me? notched out now what will happen there now is that will sit over there the nut will go down there and when they wind the nut down and compress it down it will be it will be flush or just under flush with the top of the timber and then the flooring will go over the top of that right they're the steel shoes they're 100 mil they're 50 mil and we cut them at 150 mil long it's got a 25 mil hole drilled in it that'll carry the base no, the side. yeah please yeah We're going to infill the floor with this 100mm, it's filed back, it's PIR insulation, um, like I say it's 100mm. I know some of you are struggling to get true 4x2 timber, um, our timber is 4x2, it's green, it's pressure treated, it finishes bang on 100mm, if you can see that Adam. There you go, finish 100mm, so therefore we can get our 100mm insulation in there. If you're struggling you can only get 90mm timber, then get yourself some 90mm insulation. Simon over here is cutting the CLS for the walls. Um, like I say, we've got 12 people on site, so we need to crack on with this and move quickly to make some money. And Ash is cutting the OSB for cladding the walls, so that's all prepped as well. What I'll do, as soon as we start getting some base down, I'll introduce you to all the team as well. <laughs> Michael uh, is cutting back the roots so that we can get the base of the building in without it being in contact with any muck. So what John's come across now, um, it, it, the concrete's too high there, otherwise we're going to have a massive step at the front here, so he's going to take some of that concrete out and lower the nuts. Right, so they're putting a weed membrane down now as well. What they're going to do is hold it down with ground staples. They'll force it over the top of the rods and then we'll drop a shoe on and then we can put his timber on. Thanks, Adam. Right, so me and Michael are going to put the back timber on now. So what we're going to do, that's the highest rod. There's a reason why that rod's, because we've got oh, like a land drain in there. So it, shut up. Sorry. There's a reason why that rod's so high, because we had a land drain in there and we had to avoid that. So we're going to put that one on first and then lower it down level and it should drop onto them. We good? So that's the back one on. 
Um, you need front one on now. So what will happen now, um, the back one's on, the front one will go on, then we'll put the two sides on, I'll cut them off and drop them down, and then the two middle ones will go on then as well. We good? Fingers everyone. <laughs> All right. Side one, Sean. So you can see the difference in ground level there. Um, what we're going to do in this case, we're going to, he's got some sandstone paving and a sandstone paving area here. We're going to create a sandstone paving step, which will come out of the ground and go around in front of the doors and also double step down onto this little patio there. And then there'll be a stepping stone path towards the patio area as well. So that's something else we're going to do. So what they're doing now, they're putting this side one on. Um, but obviously it won't drop down because it's hitting the front and the back. So they'll need cutting off, so they'll drop down. That'll then drop down there. So you can see there we've got the you can see there we've got the perimeter timbers in. What we're going to use then is these 250 tech screws, so 250 mil long, obviously. And we're then going to screw through there into the middle timber, and that will tie it all in together. Take any bounce out of the floor. They're also winding the nuts down, and that'll then compress the. 4 be free down into the timber shoe. So you can see there, that's the shape of the building. It's five meters long, it's three and a half meters deep. John's gonna nip the nuts down, then somebody will go around with an angle grinder and cut the top of the rod off. And then what will happen then, the 4 be 2 green treated, which is over there, that will be then cut to length and sat on joist hangers and fit in between. And then the 100 mil insulation, which Matthew is cutting, will then sit in there as well. He's cutting it with a handsaw. There's lots of different ways you can buy a Festool, saw to cut it is about 500 quid but an old saw works just as well you can see the concentration on his face Matthew there you go so what I'm going to do now I'm going to use this nine inch angle grinder with a metal cutting blade I'm going to cut the top of the rods off obviously I want to cut them so that they're low because we don't want them sticking up which will impede the floor Right, so I'm going to introduce you to the team. Um, first of all, I'll introduce you to Adam. This is Adam. Adam is 40, 43 and he's been single. here. He's single, yes, single. <laughs> if you're looking, there's Adam. Own house, car. Own house, car. He's got it all going for him. Um, and how old are you? 43. 43 and he's been working here? Nearly a year. Nearly a year. Yeah. This is Sean. Sean is 41. 41. He's been working here since May. Since May. Sean isn't single, but he could be possibly. We never know. <laughs> um, this is John. John's definitely not single. John is 40. I'm 27 plus 10 plus 6. <laughs> 46. John's 46 and he's in a long loving relationship with his wife, Claire. Right, I'll show you the rest. Where's Michael? Where's Michael? Don't drive off. It, hold on, hold on, hold on. That added up to 43. That added up to 43, so you got that wrong. Where's Michael? This is Michael. Michael is... Hello. How old are you, Michael? 47. 47. How long have you been here? Third month. Sorry. Third month. So he's been here three months. Um, and this is Simon. Simon is? 43. 43. He's been here? End of November. End of November. And neither of them are single. Right, this is Ash. Ash has been here two weeks, is it Ash? Two weeks, yes. How old are you, Ash? 25. He's 25. Are you, you're not the youngest, are you, Ash? No. no. Are you single or attached, Ash? I'm uh, attached. Attached. This is Adam. Adam. Adam's. How old? 29. 29. Single, attached? Attached. Attached. There you go. How long have you been here, Adam? Uh, two weeks. This is Dan. Dan, how old are you? 33. 33. Single, attached? So, uh, attached. Attached. Been here two weeks? Two weeks. This is Matthew. Matthew. Uh, Matthew's the youngest, are you, Matthew? 18? 18, yeah. 18. Single attached? Attached. Attached. Everybody's attached. Just, just uh, and he's been here two weeks? Yeah. Two weeks. And of course, this is Amy. Amy is 43. She's got a fantastic moisturiser, though. Um, and Amy's attached, aren't you, Amy? Oh, yes. How long have you been here? Uh, forever. 
Trevor. So there you go. That is the full team. Um, as far as I'm aware, they're all staying and nobody's going. I don't think so. No. Is everybody staying? Yeah, everybody seems to be staying anyway. Right. Right, so what we've done now, we've got the base in there. At the weather this week, there was storm Kristoff, it snowed, it's rained, we've had loads of water everywhere. And so what we're doing, I've got loads of bodies, but what we've got to do is get them on one job and then get that done so we can take a couple of the tools away to the next job. So what we're doing now, we're me, Adam, John, Sean, Michael and Simon are now going to another job to do exactly the same as what we've just done there. That'll be then five jobs we've got on the go at the moment. Um, the reason why we've got five to go at the moment is because we, there's a lag in doors and windows, which is also causing us a problem. Um, if, you, if, you've, if you've ordered doors and windows yourself, you'll know about the delay with the glass and the parts for actually making the doors, simply because of COVID, Christmas, Brexit, everything's culminated into a, like the perfect storm for leave problems with um, sourcing materials. Anyway, boring you but what's happening now then so we're all off to do this next job we're going to do exactly the same um and hopefully what we're going to do then amy's going to try and get that floor in crack on with some walls and we'll try and see how far we can get on this next one and of course as soon as we can get back to our other three jobs we will do but obviously no doors and windows so we're just waiting on them so what we're going to do now we're going to pull up have a sandwich um and then crack our way on to the next job Okay. Right, so knowing full well I'm behind him and left me no space to get in. And then, watch when he gets out. Get out, he'll be shouting and carrying on. Go on, keep filming. Keep filming. Come here, come here. Look at him. Look, can't fucking drive at all. I left in the space behind. I went, I'll leave that for Liam and I'll go in front. What's that? How much is that? How much is that? How much is that? So this is the second one. Uh, it's six metres long. It's three metres deep. Because it's three metres deep, we've only got one line in there rather than the two with the three and a half on the other one. Um, you can see John's just taking off the string line, so we're going to do exactly the same as we did before. He set the laser level up already. What we've done there, I'll just show you these two here. The reason why these are so low, the concrete in these, is because there's a water pipe, 15 mil water pipe running through there, and it's made of copper and concrete corrodes copper. So we don't know if it's live or dead. So what we've done, we've, we've put the concrete below the pipe. So we've got a big pad of concrete below. So there's no actual weight then bearing down on that 50 mil copper pipe, which runs just across there for some bizarre reason. No idea why, um, but it does run quite a long way. So we're assuming it is live. So we've avoided that. Um, but that's it, yeah. So he's going to get the laser level. He'll get the staff going. We'll drop them nuts down. We're going to get some 4 freeze jointed up as well, because that's longer than 4.8. Obviously it's a six meter run. Right then. To hold that across for me, just so I don't drill through. I don't want to. No, no. Yeah. I'm trying to avoid the, yeah, you know, coming see. through on the. <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. What's John giggling at? Missed it, but still rectified it. <laughs> I thought your finger was trapped in it. <laughs> so if you want to build one of these yourself, I'm selling build packs um, on my website at www.awkwardgardenrooms.com. Um, it gives you all the information and a full materials list for the pack that you opt to buy. I've got 13 different size packs. There's exact um, instructions on the way we build them. Even if you're going to use a concrete pad or a different base system to this, you're not tied to this. You can still build the wall, the roof and everything the same. And like I say, there's a full materials list in each pack for the pack size. Um, the £96, which includes VAT, and the £96 is a... It's an, what's the word I'm looking for, John? It's a no-brainer. So £96 a no-brainer because the time it will save you on sourcing materials and working out quantities is worth that money alone. And you'll get to build them the same kind of quality that we do as well. Right, so as far before as you can see there, there's a variation in size. So what we're going to do, this middle timber is slightly smaller. So we've pulled the string line from the front to the back. And even though John's levelled the nuts off, that timber is smaller. John, take your head off at string line, please. So he's... What he's going to do now, he's going to wind that nut up so that timber meets that string line and then that will account for the variation in timber sizes and everything will be level. You've got a string there, it's preventing me from doing my job. Move it. Wow, it's as loose as a button. Right, okay, got it. Right. 
Tell me something else is fault. Yeah. No, it's always a button. It's loose as a button, it's as straight as a button, it's as square as a button. I've never missed a button in my life. <laughs> Uh, that's not far off. Uh, yeah, look at that now. Yeah, look at that now. Look at Sam. Sam, you higher, low there. That's higher than that. Right, just lower it down a little touch. Yeah, that's just skimming line now. Right, stand it down then. There, there, there. Let Simon, let Simon get that now, and then you nip, nip your bottom note up to that, John, and then nip your top note up. Right, so once again, the three pound string line has come into its own again. Right, yeah. yeah, pull it tight. Um, what John's going to do, we're going to work his way along now and just wind these up to meet that string line because this timber that's arrived there, it's like five or six mil smaller than the rest. It happens sometimes, but it's easily got round as well. Never missed a nut in your life, have you, John? Nope. I don't want to in any time in the future. You can see it coming up there, don't are you? Are you in on that, Adam? Yeah, yeah. Because okay. it's tilted, it's like right. just touching on back end. Cool. Leave that now. We'll let you lock off. Yeah. Right, so that's the base on this one finished. I'll just drop you a little video now and show you him. He's finished as well. Okay, so Liam's asked me to do a little video. Um, he had to shoot off to another job and basically do the same with what we've done. So I'm just going to let you know basically what we've got done today. Um, we've done our floor, so our base, we've got our joists in, punch of insulation, then we put our Agritex floorboards on um, with our five minute glue of course, and then we've done our stud wall, so we start with the back, we clad it in RSB which basically squares it up for us, we also wrap it in our membrane and our slate lats just because it's easier to do while it's on the floor. Then we've done our left and our right and we've braced it. We're back tomorrow and um, we'll get the roof on. If it's dry, potentially board and rubber as well. So back over to Liam, thank you very much. Right, so that's Amy's done. She's decided to get her walls up. Um, four by two, it's green treated. Four by three, it's been pressure treated. It's a wall plate. We've put them on with joist hangers where they meet a shoe, which is, um, over there, we haven't put a joist hanger, we've put a 250 screw, two 250 screws straight through. We've put slate battens there, which are fixed to them. They will stop the insulation, 100 mil insulation from falling through. That's not 100 mil, that's 50 mil. But that's the base. There's a full weed membrane down. It's all been levelled off. It's got galvanised 24, M24 rods with galvanised nuts on them as well. Um, we've gone galvanised. The only reason was because I got a deal on the galvanised. There's not wrong with the steel. As long as you get... 8.8 .8 grade of steel, that's what you need. Not the 4.4, the cheaper one, you need the 8.8 .8 grade. Um, so that's it, two bases done. So if you want plans for these, um, show you how to build them, everything you need, full materials list, you can go to www.awkwardgardenrooms.com, 13 different sizes available there, you can buy them there. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.